Hi, today we've got some new PCBs from our sponsor for this video, PCBWay, and these are some new PCBs uh, which I spoke about at the end of the last video to explore another way of driving the gate on some MOSFETs and to compare them to the previous design. So inside the box we have just got uh, the PCBs and a stencil, so let's take a close look at the board and then we'll assemble it up. So here is the new PCB. In the background is the old one with the Enig plating. I'm still intending to use this. This is just as a test today. This one was made using the cheapest process possible. So a green PCB with a hot air sold level finish in 1.6 millimeter thickness double layer. So very straightforward, very cheap and still looks really, really good quality. So uh, as you can see, it's very slightly simpler. It doesn't have um, the gate drivers. Instead, we've got the bipolar transistors, but we'll look at that in a moment. Let's first of all just get on with the assembly of this board and then we can explore it. So that's all gone together really nicely. Let's have a quick look at the schematic to see how this is configured and then we'll have a look at some of the waveforms. Today we're going to try using the common bass amplifier which is this arrangement here and it has two things that are useful in this application. It's got voltage gain meaning we can do our level shifting but it also has no signal inversion which makes things a bit safer if something goes wrong with the software. The downside is it has a current gain of less than one because all of our current from our collector and also from our base goes through to the emitter which is being driven by either this buffer here or it would be driven by our microcontroller depending on which of these resistors we fit just here. When we want to turn our MOSFET on we actually turn this NPN transistor off and all of our gate drive is through this 3K3 resistor. So we've got around three or four milliamps of gate drive capability when we want to turn it off, we then shunt that current through this NPN transistor and that current has to be sunk by either this buffer here or our PIC microcontroller. So that's the downside with having no current gain. We actually have to sync all of that current in whatever is driving it. First of all, we're going to try using this buffer here and have a look at the waveforms. Then we'll put the zero ohm link in the opposite place here and see if our PIC micro is able to drive this efficiently as well. So the same firmware is on the PCB as last time. So we've got our 200 hertz 10% due to cycle going into this node here, PWM1. And you can see here we've got our 0 to 3.3 volt waveform, a nice square wave going into the driver circuitry. So if we probe this node here, we can look at the level shifting that occurs. And here you can see we're getting just slightly under 12 volts. It's reading 11.76. So we're able to drive the gate with a gate drive voltage higher than 10 volts from our 3.3 volt signal. And I have got the output um, loaded up. So we've got a resistor on there. It's only being driven with 7.5 volts at the moment. And there is our drive occurring quite happily. Now you'll notice there's loads of spikes because first of all, uh, we've got some long leads to our power supply, but we're also switching very rapidly. So I'm quickly gonna add some capacitors to the output. I'll explain what they're doing. Uh, but I'll add those to the output and we should get rid of those spikes altogether, which is a good thing to do because this has the potential to damage our MOSFETs. And in fact, just before we add those capacitors, just to show you what's occurring here, uh, we've got one spike that's occurring here as a result of us turning the MOSFET off quickly. But if we probe the supply rail, you can see we've actually got two spikes occurring here. So we've got a dip in the supply voltage because we've got no capacitance at this end and we've got the long leads. And then this second one, is an inductive spike because we're turning the output off rapidly. So first of all, I've added an electrolytic capacitor across the supply rail on the load side of the driver board. And as you can see, that's got rid of all of the spikes on the supply rail here. But if we probe the output, we still do have a spike when we turn off 
the load. So the next thing we need to do is add a small capacitor across the load and that should get rid of that altogether. So I've now added a 100 nanofarad capacitor across the load and the idea of this is to basically absorb that spike because what was happening is when we turned off the output very rapidly the energy had nowhere to go and we ended up with a big transient spike. Uh, so this capacitor should now absorb that energy and as you can see we've got a very nice clean waveform here. So we should be able to increase the load now all the way up to 4 amps uh, which we can do by increasing the voltage on the output and you can see the waveform still looks really good. Let's zoom in a little bit more on the time base and what we can see here is it's just a little bit slower at turning on. So we might quickly have a look at the thermal camera and just see if the MOSFET's getting any warmer but it's taking uh, what is that about five microseconds to turn on that MOSFET fully. So once again we're using the Top Don TC001 just to quickly look at the thermals. Uh, we've got it loaded up now but as you can see we're not really getting any significant heating on that MOSFET so it still looks like the gate driver is doing a good job here. The buffer here is now disconnected by removing the zero ohm link in R22 and fitting it to R23 which means that the microcontroller is now driving this node directly and has to sync the current from this 3k3 resistor running from the 12 volt rail. And the waveform you can see on the screen is this node here and as you can see there's a little bit of a glitch occurring a couple of microseconds in uh, but you can definitely see a slope there that wasn't there before. If we look at this node here now which is the gate we can probe that point and you can see it's a little bit slower to turn on so we get this little hump and then it takes all of this time to turn on so maybe 15 microseconds or so for it to fully turn that gate on. Uh, this is with the load actually turned off so if I turn on the load now uh, we see just a small change to the waveform here but everything else looks okay. So let's look at the output and as we can see we're still driving that 4 amps or so into the load resistor and it's still looking pretty good. There's just a, a slight slew rate that you can see uh, as it turns on. And once again looking at the output MOSFETs we've got the crosshair just there and we can see that MOSFET doesn't appear to be heating up at all. So it looks like uh, that circuit could work without that additional buffer. So in summary this is our simplest implementation of a output driver that is able to drive a heavy load from a 33 volt signal with no signal inversion. Now this does rely on us having a separate supply rail to be able to drive the gate. So we just happen to have a 12 volt rail on this PCB that we're able to pick up to drive the gate. We would be able to run this line here from our output supply if it meets the requirements for the maximum VGS which on most of these MOSFETs is around 20 volts. So if we wanted to drive uh, some outputs with a supply voltage of higher than 24 volts we'd probably need to use some Zener diode clamps or something else so that we still meet that requirement but in this application this is our simplest implementation. So in the end a pretty simple solution and fairly basic electronics theory but uh, I see this question asked a lot of times in forums and I thought it'd be useful to share my journey in designing one of these uh, hopefully it's helped someone out there that's watching it. So hope you enjoyed the video. Any thoughts or comments don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Thank you to our sponsor PCBWay for providing these PCBs. Don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some boards made. And until next time, thanks for watching.